Hey, what's up, folks? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all having the best day possible. I have a fun and interesting video for you today. 13 things about the US I can't live without anymore. This video is produced by Philae or Philae from Germany. Um, and she's a German citizen that moved to the US later on. And now these are the things that she just will not live without. So I thought this would be interesting for those Americans to see what is it about their country that foreigners love so much. So without any further delay, let's get right into the reaction. Right now, number one on my list of things about the US that I don't want to live without anymore is air conditioning. Air conditioning. As you guys know, it's pretty normal in the US to have air conditioning in buildings, whether that's stores, public buildings, or private homes. More modern buildings even have central air conditioning usually, where the air gets circulated through these air vents that you'll find in every room. Now, why is this so special? For those of you who don't know, in Europe and actually in most countries of the world, it's actually not standard to have air conditioning inside of buildings. Now, in one of my pretty early videos, I actually said that I wasn't a big fan of central AC and many of you guys commented that I wouldn't say that if I lived in a hotter area. Now first of all Cincinnati <laughs> does get extremely hot and especially humid in the summer. This year it's been fluctuating a little bit more but usually from about April to September it's 80 to 90 degrees almost the whole time with a really high humidity which often makes it pretty hard to deal with. It'll so this is very interesting so you know I live in South Africa and we've never had air conditioning um, and that's in a country where it does get very hot, you know, winter and summer, it gets to high temperatures, but sort of just open to the conditions. However, I've, I've clearly have experienced air conditioning before. Sometimes I go into a, you know, public building or something and the air conditioning is on and it does feel so good. So I can imagine that if you're used to that in your household, that will be a hard thing to give up. So I can definitely, you know, agree with her on this one get over 100 degrees a lot too so like around 38 degrees celsius now of course we also have cold winters here but it's not like we don't deal with the heat here at all if you look at the longitude cincinnati is about the same level as ibiza in spain or sardinia in italy the reason why i said i didn't love central ac back then was because when living with other people or in public buildings like at a university americans often really overdo it with the ac instead of setting That's the temperature true. to a normal average room temperature inside that would already feel cold compared to the hot summer air outside it often feels like an actual fridge inside i'm not kidding people often often set it to like 16 to 18 degrees Celsius, oh, wow. like around 63 degrees Fahrenheit, which to me is just as inconvenient as the outdoor temperature. It's just the other extreme. Plus, you usually wear short summer clothes during that time, and it's pretty annoying to always basically have to carry a sweater with you in the middle of the summer because you'll need it when you go inside. So that was what temperature do you folks keep your AC at? So she's mentioning that most people that she was around kept it between 16 and 18, which is clearly well below room temperature. I guess the argument for that is as long as your area is cold or, you know, manageable, you can always put on a hoodie, you can put on clothing to keep yourself warm. But if the area is hot, there's nothing you can do about it. You know, you can wear a t-shirt inside, nothing, but if it's too hot, it's just unbearable. So I can see why people like to keep their temperatures, you know, below room temperature and then rather just wear warm items. But let me know what temperature do you keep it at? was one reason why I said that back then and then the other reason was that I find it kind of annoying that in a bigger house when you live with your family or roommates it's all regulated centrally so you can't turn it up or down or even off just in your room or just in the living room if the rest of the people want the AC on you have to live with it at most places you can usually close your vent in your room but that doesn't usually make that big of a difference I personally like it better if you could regulate the temperature individually in every room. I remember that five years ago when I came here on my exchange semester in August, I was sitting in my room doing homework or something and I was wearing my warm winter clothes that I had brought for later on in the semester and I was also wearing a scarf because I found it so cold inside and I also got sick for like a few weeks straight right after I came here because the AC was so cold. But besides that, I think it's awesome that AC exists here because it helps a lot with the humidity and it's also just really really nice to be in a restaurant or even in a club with a dance floor and not have to sweat your ass off. 
In Germany, when it's hot, it's hot everywhere mm -hmm. usually. On the subway, in restaurants, at school, in the office. But here, you don't usually have to worry about your legs sticking to a chair when sitting down in the summer, so that's pretty awesome. Plus, ceiling fans are great too, so when I'm home in Germany in the summer, when it's actually hot there for once, um, I actually do miss both my AC and my ceiling fans. Number Fair two enough. is customer service. I know that many Germans okay. don't share this opinion, especially the ones who only know this from vacation to the US or from the media, but once you've gotten used to it, American customer service is pretty amazing. Whether it's at a store or a restaurant, overall, people working in customer service just treat you really, really nicely. Oh, yeah. They'll be friendly, make small talk with you, and usually try to accommodate every request you might have, even if you're basically asking to create a whole new meal that isn't on the menu. Right. In Germany, you'd probably just get an answer along the lines of, that's not possible, not even a sorry in a lot of cases. Of course, yeah. this is an... So, I mean, I've been to Germany a couple of times for, you know, various university exchanges and stuff like that. And I can definitely say that the... You know, I loved my experience in Germany, but it's definitely a lot more direct than other countries. You know, it's either, you know, a yes or no. And, you know, you it's up to you to fend for yourself, you know, put your big boy pants on and, you know, get from point A to B. Where I've definitely heard from many people that the customer service in America is very, very good. They hold your hand to get from point A to B rather than simply telling you to get there. So I can definitely see from a German's perspective how you would miss that hospitality and that customer service that America has to offer. Always the case, but overall, this is a difference that really sticks out. And even though many Germans say that they prefer the direct and sometimes even unfriendly German customer service, I really haven't met anyone who says that after living here for Why a would while. You prefer it definitely takes a little bit to get used to the American way because as a German, it might seem disingenuous at first, maybe even fake and over the top, but it's kind of like a cultural language that you'll have to learn how to speak and understand first. And I personally don't want to live without it anymore. I've had so many people working in customer service just make my day much better just by being friendly or exchanging some nice small talk. It can even make running errands a much more pleasant experience. I just recently told a story about when I had to get my Ohio driver's license renewed on the podcast. That was a perfect example of this too, so I'll just link that episode down below. Of course I know that, especially in the food service industry, a lot of the good customer service goes back to the staff being paid only a few dollars an hour and mainly relying on tips. But you'll experience the good customer service in other fields as well where people are paid much better, so I would argue that it's much more than just the tipping culture. Another cool thing- Look guys, I think your friendliness is free. So, you know, if you got the opportunity to be friendly and help someone, why not do it? It doesn't take too much time out of your day and it makes a big difference to other people. And that's one thing that America 100% has locked down one of the more friendly countries thing about the US is that there are so many entrepreneurs and okay this is an ad I'm just gonna skip the ad the next point on my list is convenience I feel like this one is a pretty obvious one but the US really is the country of consumption and convenience. You need some milk, a new bathing suit, and a new lamp for your living room? Just go to Walmart or Target or any of those stores and you'll find everything in one store. Mm. Plus, there's most likely also gonna be a Starbucks in there too. You're nice. in a hurry, but you need to stop by the store for a couple things? No worries, just run in, check out at the self-checkout machine, and usually you don't even need to bring your wallet, just pay with your phone. If you realize at midnight on a Sunday that you're out of tomatoes, no worries, just go to the grocery store. Many of them don't close until 1 a.m. or oh, never. Wow. 1 and stores aren't closed on Sundays like they are in Germany. What a dream. Or you can just have the tomatoes delivered or order takeout from a restaurant with services like Uber Eats or DoorDash or Grubhub, etc. And of course, a big part of this whole convenience thing is also the fact that here in the Midwest, you can just drive to places and you'll usually find parking pretty easily. And the parking spots are huge compared to Germany and so are the streets. Driving here in Ohio is just so relaxing compared to driving and especially parking in Munich. Is it environmentally friendly? Definitely not. Is it convenient though? Unfortunately, yes. Well, the thing is with most of these European countries, they're very close and they have, they're very close together and you know, if towns are tight, you know, a lot of people, small spaces, it doesn't really make sense for everyone to be using their vehicle and they make more use of public transport. America, 
way more spread out, you know, much larger, um, much more open space. Definitely makes more sense to be connected via roads. So I think it's clearly an obvious difference between the United States and some of these, you know, European countries. In South Africa, we also drive everywhere. Uh, we can't really use the public transport. It's not that good. So we drive from point A to B. So this is definitely something I would miss. You know, if I, you know, was to go to Europe now and live there and not have a vehicle at my disposal, that would be slight inconvenience. I cannot lie. Along with the big streets and parking spots also goes the fact that there's just a lot more space in this country than in Germany. Uh -huh. Everything is huge here and I especially enjoy that when it comes to living spaces. Houses, bedrooms, closets, fridges, all of that is just so much bigger in the US and especially here in Ohio, living space is still relatively inexpensive compared to Munich, which is the most expensive city to live in in Germany. Here, when people say that they have a tiny bedroom, it's still big for German standards usually. And and in Ohio, you can buy a regular house with, let's say, two or three bedrooms for like one to two hundred thousand dollars, while even just an apartment with three bedrooms in Munich is usually over a million dollars. The what? fifth thing that I really wouldn't want to miss about the US is how easy it is to connect with people here. Americans in general are just so open to meeting new people and making Love new that. friends. You can combine friend groups pretty easily if you're having a party or a barbecue. And especially as someone who's new to a country, it's a lot easier to find friends than it would be in Germany where friends Friend groups tend to be a little more closed off and long term. Plus, so this is one thing I'm definitely looking forward to. You know, me and my friend groups were very open to meeting people. So when I do eventually visit the US, you know, I'm aiming for Texas and some other various places in the South. I'm looking forward to that, you know, Southern hospitality that, you know, meeting people on the fly. I know um, some of my friends from America, they tell me it's so easy to meet people in the United States. So that is one thing I look forward to. And it's a very, very positive trait regarding people in America. They're so open to meeting new people, not closed off. What I will say when visiting Germany, despite me making good friends there, they are a lot more closed off. Everybody's to themselves. Um, you rarely have to break down the walls to get to know someone where people from America is open from the get go. I feel like Americans are great at genuinely being interested in another person's story and finding common ground, even if you're really different people on the surface. Number six is pretty simple, but it has become an absolute essential part of my life, kettle corn. It's a mix of sweet and salty popcorn and it's the absolute best snack in the world. The best store brand for kettle corn is Boom Chica Pop, by the way. They're not sponsoring me, even though they should, so if anyone working for Boom Chica Pop is watching, shoot me an email. But jokes aside, in Germany it's actually standard to eat sweet popcorn at the movie theater. So if you don't specify otherwise, ordering popcorn means ordering sweet popcorn. It's Not even corn. mixed, just sweet. Never in the US, popcorn corn. is salty by default and often has a butter sauce on top. So it's more of a salty and buttery snack. And they'll also put things like cheese powder on it which has grown on me to be honest, but the creme de la creme is still kettle corn. Number seven is carpet in houses. It's a lot more common in the US to have carpeted floors in the living room, but especially in the bedrooms than it is in Germany. In Germany, that's a rather outdated thing and you won't see a lot of houses with carpet anymore these days. You'll mostly find hardwood floors there, parquet usually. And that's because most Germans prefer hardwood floors and nowadays a lot of Americans do too, but I love how common carpet is here because I just find it so much more cozy to wake up in the morning and walk on soft fluffy carpet rather than walking on cold and slippery hardwood floors. One big thing that, that I'd sense. like for Germany to adopt, so this is my official request Germany, is the amount of pools that you'll find here in the US. Not just private pools that you'll find in someone's backyard, but neighborhood pools or pools in apartment buildings. That's not a common thing at all in Germany, but here, if you live in the suburbs or a more residential neighborhood, it's super common that there is a public pool that everyone living in the neighborhood can use. And many apartment complexes have a pool too, kind of like a hotel. There are even student apartment buildings with pools here. And needless to say, in the summer, that's just really awesome 
You either have a pool in your own neighborhood or you'll go to the one in your friend's neighborhood or building and they often have public grills too. The next thing that I love yeah. here in the US in my daily life is the bar culture. Oh, I yeah. feel like overall it's a much bigger bar slash pop culture here than in Germany, especially compared to Munich where we don't have a lot of bars where you just go in and get a drink at the bar and then stand around or sit on a bar stool. Most places have table service and if you want to go party party, you'll usually go to a club where you'll have to pay a cover fee and where the party doesn't really start until 1 a.m. or later. Here in the US, I just love how many, let's call them non-binding bars there are where nobody cares whether you order something or not and you can just get a beer for three dollars or at least here in Cincinnati. You yeah, so the bar culture I hear in the US definitely is really, really good. And I love that. I love going to a bar with a group of friends, having a few beers, chatting, you know, over what has transpired during our week. So, you know, bar culture definitely, you know, hits the spot. Um, I also like the what about the US is like the US diner culture. You know, in South Africa, we've tried to like replicate that diner lifestyle with a few uh, different chain restaurants. But I feel like you will never get the authentic experience unless you go to a proper US diner. So the US diners and the US bars are something I'm very much looking forward to. What she's saying about Germany and the clubs is definitely true. My couple of times visiting there, it's not, there's not really the typical bar culture as it is a club culture. You know, um, I went to some of the biggest clubs in the world in Berlin, Germany, and it's, it's a, it's a bit crazy. <laughs> it's a bit crazy. It's a nice experience to see, to experience once, but sometimes you just want to sit down with your friends and have a casual beer and, uh, you know, Berlin definitely was not the place for that, but it was just, you know, four different floors. It was called the Berghain Club. Uh, if you Google it, Berghain Club, it's, uh, it's a bit crazy. So it doesn't have the same bar culture as the US for sure. You can and you can hang out and many bars even have a dance floor too. No cover fee and since in Ohio and many other American states the sale of alcohol has to end by 2 a.m. most bars close at 2 or 2 30 a.m. Sounds early and you might wonder why would I like that? Well I like it because it means that people start partying much earlier and I get to go to sleep at pretty much my normal sleep time because I'm a night owl and I don't have to ruin the entire next day like in Germany where you often stay out until 6 a.m. or later because the party doesn't even really start until late at night. Yep. Plus, going out here is much cheaper since a lot of the bars simply have a dance floor and you don't need to pay a cover fee. So it's more flexible, better hours in my opinion, and a lot cheaper. Plus, I like the music much better too. I'm not really into EDM and in my opinion, Germans don't have great taste in music because they don't have a lot of rhythm. So everything is always just boom, 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 like the same beat the whole night. So I personally just like the music here in the US a lot better. Another really important one is Mexican food. With Mexico Ooh. being right across the border and Mexicans being the biggest immigrant group here, you'll find Mexican restaurants everywhere, which we don't really have in Germany. Now, before you guys comment, oh, but it's not real Mexican food, it's Tex-Mex, it's Americanized. Well, first of all, that tastes really good too, but even in Cincinnati in the Midwest, there are numerous authentic Mexican restaurants as well. I've never been to Mexico myself, but if Mexicans who live here say that it's authentic, I'll believe them. You don't have to travel to certain states to find good Mexican food. It's really all over the country. The next point is something that I've talked about Mexican a little food. more in detail in this video, but I really like the positive mindset in the American culture. This is a generalization, of course, but overall, Americans have an attitude that's much more let's try it what could go wrong rather right. than germans who are often more like why would we try that something could go wrong i like to summarize it like this when germans would say why are you doing that americans are often more like why not? Which is something that I personally just really enjoy because I find it to be a much more supportive environment to be creative personally and live your life how you want to live it and not how other people expect you to live it. I'm that's that why not attitude is a big reason why America and Americans have, you know, marched forward in most of the technological advancements in this world because they are way more willing to try something. You know, they're not as cynical as other other countries. Very positive mindset. I definitely agree with that. Um, and that's why you've gone from strength to strength over the years. So positive mindset is definitely something that's needed. It's a good to surround yourself with people with a positive mindset because you eventually become, you become those people that you surround yourself with. So if you surround yourself with negativity, 
you will become negative. You surround yourself with positivity, you will become positive. And because most Americans, I say most, are positive, you become a positive person yourself. Pretty sure I wouldn't have this YouTube channel if it weren't for that positive and encouraging mindset here. Number 12 on my list is flexibility, by which I mostly mean that compared to Germany, when it comes to moving or your job, things are a lot more spontaneous and you can decide things much more last minute here. Like while in Germany it's common that you have to give a three months notice to quit your job or being fired, it's only a two weeks notice here, even for salary jobs. Which obviously has a lot of downsides too, but I kind of like how it makes life a little bit more flexible. Even more so with housing, if you rent a place, it's usually a one-year lease in the US. If you want to stay after that year, you can usually resign the lease for another year, but it kind of encourages a lot of people to move a lot, which again might be perceived as something negative, but I personally like how it's normal for people to move around a lot and thereby keep their lives interesting and keep their options open as to where and how they're gonna live in the future. In Germany, leases are usually unlimited and people move a lot less in general. If you buy a house in Germany, you usually plan on staying there permanently or at least for a really long time, whereas Americans often just buy houses and then sell them again after a few years to move somewhere new. And last but not least, a thing that I could have included in my point on convenience, but I felt like it deserved to have its own point on the list, is drive throughs One of the most American and most convenient things ever, there are really drive throughs everywhere here for fast food restaurants, obviously, but also for Starbucks and other coffee shops, pharmacies, banks, so like drive through ATMs, drive through vaccines, which is how I got my COVID vaccine, drive through convenience stores or even liquor stores, and apparently there are even drive through wedding chapels. You can definitely call it lazy, but it's also part of that American convenience that has kind of seduced me in a way. It's just so comfortable to be in your own car, not worrying about what you look like really, waiting in line while sitting down with your own music, but still getting food and completing other errands. And that wraps up my list of 13 things about the US that I don't want to live without anymore after. Okay, folks, so that, that's definitely interesting. I think what you can see from this girl's experience is that, you know, her life has become a little bit happier since she's moved to the US. You know, her life's become a little bit easier since living in the US. And this is someone coming from another first world country. She's not coming from you know, developing third world country. She's coming from Germany to the US and yet life has become better. She does not want to leave. She doesn't want to deal with not having these conveniences anymore. So it just speaks volumes, you know, of the lifestyle you can live when uh, moving to the United States of America. But yeah, folks, let me know uh, what you think of this video and what you think of these 13 things that Philly could not live without anymore. I definitely appreciate your guys' opinions. If you did enjoy this video and other videos that I've uploaded, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. It definitely helps a lot. But that is all I have for you today. So until next time, I hope you have the best week possible. I'll see you when I see you. Cheers.